Here we're gonna look at a nice and quick number theory problem. And what I like a lot about this problem is that we are only going to use very, very simple methods like straightforward arithmetic and the definition of prime numbers. We don't have to worry about um, congruence modulo n or anything like that. Okay, so let's see what our goal is. We want to find all x and y, which are non-negative integers. So I've written this as like z underscore bigger than or equal to zero and prime numbers p satisfying the following equation. We have p to the x plus one equals y squared. So I'm not gonna give any hints or anything, but maybe if you wanna try this problem, go ahead and pause the video and give it a go. Okay, so now let's jump into the solution. So the fact that we have y squared on one side of the equation and plus one on the other side of the equation really just screams at us to move that one over and then factor this thing like a difference of squares factors. So let's start by doing that. So we're gonna write p to the x equals y squared minus one. And then factor this thing on the right hand side to y plus one times y minus one. And now we wanna make the following obvious but very important observation. And that is the left hand side is a power of a prime p. But if the left-hand side of the equation is a power of p, then also the right-hand side is a power of p. But the fact that the right-hand side is a power of p and we have factored it into two parts, that means each of these parts is a power of this prime. So that means we have the following fact. We have y plus one equals p to the a for some a and then we have y minus one is equal to p to the b for some b. And then also, since y plus one is bigger than y minus one, that trickles down to the fact that a is bigger than b. So that's an important thing to notice. And that'll get us started with the next step. Now we wanna look at this system of equations and notice if we could reduce this so we only have powers of primes, we would have a lot of power. And that's not too hard to do just by subtracting these two equations. That will allow us to eliminate the y. So let's do that and see what we get. So we'll get y plus one minus y minus one equals p to the a minus p to the b. But now we can simplify the left-hand side of this. We've got y minus y cancels, and one minus negative one will give us two. So we've got two on the left-hand side. And then since a is bigger than b, we can factor a p to the b out of this, and we'll be left with p to the a minus b minus one. And the important thing to notice here is that both of these are natural numbers. So let's maybe put that. We, both of those are natural numbers. But that means we factored two, which is a prime number, into the product of two natural numbers. That means one of these is equal to one and the other is equal to two. But that breaks into two cases based off of those two choices. So just to reiterate, we're using the fact that the only way to factor two into a product of two natural numbers is as two times one. Okay, so let's look at our first case. So our first case will be p to the b equals two, and then p to the a minus b minus one equals one. So that's our first case, and then we can split up that factorization of two the other way, and that'll give us our second case, which is p to the b is equal to one, and p to the a minus b minus one is equal to two. So let's see what this first case gives us. Well, if p to the b is equal to two, well, that means immediately that the prime p is equal to two and the number b is equal to one, like that. Then next, we can reduce this to two to the a minus b equals two by adding one to both sides of the equation, but then we know b is equal to one, so this is really two to the a minus one equals two but that tells us that a is equal to two. Now we can insert these parts into our equations up here and that'll give us y pretty quickly. So maybe we'll insert this b into this equation 
we'll see that y minus one is equal to two to the one, but that means y is equal to three. But then finally, we can stick this value of y into our original equation, either here or here, and we'll see that two to the x is equal to three squared minus one, but if two to the x is equal to three squared minus one, that's the same thing as two to the x equals eight, which means um, x equals three. So there we've got our first solution. So y is equal to three, x is equal to three, and then p is equal to two. So I'll just put that right there so they're next together. Okay, so now let's go on to our second case. So if p to the b is equal to one, that means b is equal to zero. Great. And then here we have p to the a minus b minus one equals two, but that means p to the a is equal to three, given the fact that b is equal to zero and then moving that one over. But now we know immediately what a is. So that means a is equal to one and p is equal to three, kind of in parallel to what's going on over here. Okay, so now let's see if we can get the other values. So if a is equal to one and p is equal to three, that means y plus one is equal to three, but that means y is equal to two. So we immediately see that y is equal to two. And then next, if y is equal to two, then we've got two squared minus one so that's going to be 4 minus 1, which is 3. So we have 3 to the x equals 3. So that means x is equal to 1. And that gives us our second solution. And these are the only two solutions to our starting equation. And that's a good place to stop.